Hey guys, Matt here with Carolina Coops, and today we are right outside our shop in upstate New York. Right next to me is one of our California production coops that we have on display. It is January 8th, 9th. Nine. It is 14 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, very common this time of year, and hopefully that sounds really, really cold to everyone else, because that's the point of this video, is I want to show you guys, once again, our heated water system. It works really, really well. And I also want to talk about some of the times that it's failed for people and why and how to troubleshoot it. So just to recap on the system, this barrel right here is full of water right now. It's 50 gallons of water. This barrel is food safe high density polyethylene. And the water, which I'll show you here in a minute, is about right there. Down here is the hose bin, okay? And right now that is on all the way. Right here is a four foot stainless steel hose. Each connection is a three quarter inch male hose thread. So we got water pushing down through the hose bib, through the hose to the pump. Now, speaking of the pump, let's walk inside real quick. Here's the pump and two things, three things. Very, very critical, especially if you're putting your uh, water bar together yourself. Number one, it is critical that the pump is pointed in the right direction. Right here is an arrow. It is critical that that arrow is pointed to the water bar and pushing the water through the water bar, not sucking it. Number two, actually come back down here. I want you guys to hear it or not hear it. It should not be loud. If it's loud, you have air in the line or it's frozen. It should not be loud, okay? The only way I can describe it is it reminds me of a, an aquarium filter. Now, the other thing is, notice, uh, actually let me show you. So here's all the water, 14 degrees Fahrenheit. We have no problem with water, all right? Come right out of those nipples. So right now, water, gravity is pushing that water down, helping assist the pump. The pump is plugged in, it is on, pushing water through the water bar, and also critical, it's pushing the water uphill, all right? And the reason why that's important is air will get in the water bar. When chickens are hitting this and drinking from it, you can potentially get air in it. In theory, you probably shouldn't, but it does happen. Either way, don't ever want an air trap or an air dam. Uh, especially you get caught in the bowl part of the pump. So in this case, it's gonna go right uphill and be discharged through the four foot stainless steel hose, going out the end of the water bar, through the hose to the top side of the rain barrel. So let's go back on that side. And also a disclaimer, it, it just it goes to prove it does work. You are not supposed to do this. Um, we have two things plugged in. We have the thousand watt heater down inside the rain barrel. Um, well, that's what it looks like. This 1,000 watt heater is good for 50 gallons of water all the way down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Also, it is designed for plastic and it is self-regulating. That's critical. I can't say it enough. People keep making this mistake. This heater, all you do is plug it directly into a plug. In this case, it's 110 AC and it's just a regular 15 amp circuit. It does not need to be plugged into what the pump is plugged into, which is this right here. This is um, a device we absolutely love, and what it is, a thermostatic switch. So when it gets down to 35 degrees Fahrenheit, it turns on and does not turn off until I think 45 degrees Fahrenheit. And what there is, this the pump is not self-regulating. I'll plug it in here, and that allows it to be a set and forget it system, so you never have to worry about it. If it gets cold, it's gonna turn the pump on. The other thing is, and this has happened to me, I almost should tell people to make sure they take this. If this gets disconnected, which it can easily, a chicken hits it, uh, you know, who knows what. Um, you, you got just tape it so it doesn't happen. Uh, so part of the troubleshooting is I have people calling me, it's frozen, it's not working. So the first question is, do you have power? And I believe it or not, I've had people say, oh, of course we got power. They don't even have power to it. So confirm you have power. Confirm you got both things plugged in. Again, just recently, um, people didn't realize they had a heater inside their barrel. So just make sure, again, the heater's plugged in, the pump's plugged in, and the pump is plugged into your thermostatic switch. And make sure you have power. If you're gonna use an extension cord, try to keep it as short as possible. The longer the cord, the more resistance. It can have a tendency to be more taxing on the, uh, in this case, the heater. Um, but again, the manufacturer recommends running a dedicated circuit. So just a disclaimer. Now, also, I want you guys to see the return. Now, 
it's not bad. That's actually returning a little bit slower than I would like to see, and I think I know why. Another reason why this system could fail is you can't have blockage, okay? People get a little confused, like, well, it's not working, and I know it's flowing. You got to make sure. So there's a systematic approach that I highly recommend uh, making sure that there's no blockage. And I have a feeling, I think I already know why that is a little bit slower than I'd like to see. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna turn the pump off. I'm gonna close the hose bin. I guess one, make sure the hose bin open all the way, which I think I did earlier when I first started the video. I'm gonna close that. I'm gonna unscrew this. Notice I don't need channel locks and pliers. You really should. There is a rubber gasket inside here. All you gotta do is get that snug. Some people make the mistake. If you over tighten it, you'll kink it. That'll cause a problem. So that rubber gasket will seal it and make it waterproof. So I actually have a hunt. It is a rain barrel. It's outside. Look again, I'm breaking rules. I have this off. I actually no idea why. Because we are collecting rainwater, debris can fall in there and potentially get in there and clog it. That's what the screen is for. I, whatever. Um, so that should be screwed on there. But if that does happen, so I'm going to turn this on and check it. That is slow. That's what I thought. I don't, that's way too slow. I bet you I got debris in there. So what you should do, which I'm not going to do, but if you want to take the time, dump it, flush it, clear it out, or just do this real quick, which sucks when it's 14 degrees. But either way, I'm going to unscrew this. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we got good flow there. Okay, so I'm just gonna screw that back in. I'm not even gonna re-tefloning it. As you see, it's not leaking. Okay, don't over tighten it, don't strip it. Now let's test it. Look at that, look at that, see? It was just that simple. Now, I'm gonna screw this back in. Fingers are really numb now, so I can't feel anything. Is that helping with dramatic effect? It is. Good. All right, so now I'm gonna turn this back on. Now, I know now I have air in there. I care because I gotta make sure when I plug this back in that that air gets pushed back out. And I don't know it's getting pushed back out when I hear it come out of here. If I don't hear it come out of here and I don't hear that pump quiet down, something's not right. You hear that? Did you hear the air come out? Oh, look at that, that's the flow. It's supposed to be two gallons per minute. That's what we want. So just keep an eye on it. Anyways, that's what it should look like. Now here's another mistake. Um, and I know this is a whole nother topic about heating the coop in the winter time. You do not want to heat the coop in the winter time. Uh, but I do like, and we sell our polycarbonate run covers, or you can do what we do because we're cheap. Um, it's a little redneck. We wrap the entire coop in plastic. And that is so that we block the wind chill. Chickens do very well in cold temperatures. It's the wind chill that sucks for them, sucks for us. So just think about it. Uh, but we want consistency in the temperature from the hen house to the run, and then we're all good. However, I've had people take this thermostatic switch, this whole plug connection, and have it on the inside of the run, and they wrap their coop in plastic, and it is warming up in there, okay? Well, that's in an inaccurate reading for this thermostatic switch. I always recommend keeping this on the outside. We want this reading the coldest temperatures possible. So hopefully that makes sense. Now let's say that wasn't the problem with the clog. You just continue to troubleshoot and work your way through it until eventually you can actually unscrew this. Oh, what the hell, I'll do it real quick. You know, you can unscrew it. And this is a good way to get air out of the lines, but that's all we're seeing. That's all we need. We don't need a lot of movement. We just need it circulating, okay? So just make sure there's no clogs anywhere. And if there is, you just blow it out. You know, you could run an airline through that if something got in there. But it's usually the lower parts that I see if you're lazy like me and you don't put this on. Leaves get in the gutters, get down in there. Oh, and actually a tip from one of our customers in Florida. I love what she did. She actually, t I, I call it floss. It's like a, what would you call it? You remember that? Like a fiber filter. It's like a, yeah, it's a flossy fiber filter. Maybe we can bring that up when we edit the video. Uh, just to help keep even smaller particulates out. Cause look at this is, you know, they're two mil by two mil. You know, the idea is to keep mosquitoes out of there and um, larger debris. But anyways, you guys get the idea. I hope that helps uh, because I can tell you 
one of the things about this heater water system is it makes it so much easier and better for the chicken owner to have chickens in the winter time because there's nothing worse than when your water is constantly freezing i hope you liked the video i hope this was helpful uh whether you are trying to troubleshoot your existing heated water system where you're trying to make your own um or you are thinking about getting one it works and it works beautifully but everything has to be correct or it won't work thanks for watching